In this video, I'll rig the eyes and the brows for this flat character. Eyes can be a little bit tricky to rig depending on the shapes you need to hit, but the character's eyes are really important, so I end up using a lot of animation controls. But I'll show you how we can manage them so that they don't seem overwhelming. These are the polygonal shapes that I'll be using. The brow is one piece, and the eye has separate pieces for the lids, the pupil, and an extra shape behind the eye that can be used to create an outline. I'll start by rigging the brow, and I'll use some of the same techniques that I used in the previous video where I rigged the body. This geometry was built with enough resolution so it could be posed with a C shape, but also an S curve shape. This could be built with a little less resolution, but I like having that extra row in the middle so I have a little bit more control over the shapes. To rig this, I'll use single joints and place five of them along the rows of the polygon. Then I'll create animation controls by using NURB circles and snapping those to the joints. And I'll use a square shaped circle for the main brow control and then group the individual brow controls underneath it and then make the joints a child of the corresponding animation controls. This is now the rig for our brow, and I just have to bind the brow geometry to those joints. I'll select all five joints and the geometry, and bind the skin using selected joints. And now the brow geometry is rigged, and all the animation controls can be translated, rotated, and scaled. To create the circular shape for the white of the eye, I cut a polygonal sphere in half and flattened it. Usually I avoid these triangular poles, but since the geometry will be a single color and I don't have to worry about texture mapping across this area, then it won't be an issue. I'll quickly duplicate this geometry to create a pupil and put that off to the side, but come back to that later. And now I'll create the joints and the controls in the same way that I did for the brow. And this is where I would test the number of joints and the resolution of the geometry to see if it's working. I'd rather have more controls to get the shapes that I like, but you could get away with fewer controls. Now I'll make the animation controls and a main eye control and group the individual controls underneath it. Then group the joints under the controls and bind them. I'll want the pupil to always have a round or an oval shape, so I can just create an individual control and group the pupil underneath it without binding it. Now I want to connect the pupil to the eye control, but I don't want to just group it because that'll cause problems. When you scale a node in the hierarchy, it stretches the space nodes below it, which would make it impossible to control the pupil if we did it this way. I want it to follow the translation and the rotation of the eye control, but not pick up its scales. So I'll use a constraint instead. But before I set up the constraint, I'll create a group node over the pupil control to use for the constraint setup. Now I'll select the eye shape control, control select the group node over the pupil control, and go to constraint and select parent constraint. That just set up the constraint and now the pupil follows the translation and the rotation of the eye control. And the reason that I set up the constraint on the group node is because the constraint takes up the translation and rotation values. So this way I can still animate the pupil by using the control node beneath it. And here's the difference between just grouping the pupil and using this constraint setup. With the grouped hierarchy on the left, the pupil scales with the eye and it's really hard to control. But with the constraint setup on the right, the pupil follows the eye, but it doesn't pick up its scales. So it's much more controllable. We're starting to build a lot of controls. So I'll make an attribute on the eye control so that I can turn the extra shape controls on and off. I'll do this with the attribute editor and go to attributes, add attribute. In there, I'll name it eye shape controls and give it a value of zero to one and hit okay. Now I can connect this channel to the visibility of the individual controls with the connection editor. Since I had the eye control selected, it automatically filled in the output and I can scroll down to the bottom to find the channel that we just added. Then pick the individual controls and select their visibility to connect these channels. I'll repeat that for all the individual controls, and now this channel can be used to turn on and off the visibility for all the eye shape controls. Those channels are keyable by default, but if you don't want to key them, you can go to the channel control and move that channel to non-keyable but displayed. This way I can use the channel, but I won't accidentally key it. For these type of characters, I like to add a partial line and sometimes a full outline around the eyes. I'll set this up by placing another polygon behind the white of the eye, and rigging it in the same way. I'll simply duplicate the eye joints, unparent them, and move them back to line up with the new geometry. And I'll make animation controls using a curve with a different shape so that it's easily recognizable from the other controls. Then parent the joints to the controls and bind the geometry. I want this shape to follow the eye controls, so I'll make these new outline controls a child of the eye shape controls. This way they'll follow the eye shape controls, and then I can use them to add a line around the eye whenever I want. And now we have even more controls, so I'll add another attribute to the eye control so I can turn these controls on and off as well. And I'll also make a channel for the geometry, but leave it keyable so I can animate its visibility. And now we can add the eyelids. Eyelids can be tricky depending on the shapes that you want to hit and how you want to control them. 
Since I'll be using separate pieces of geometry for the lids, then it may be worth creating a library of replacement shapes and animating their visibility. Here's a row of replacement shapes that could be used for the lids, and if we move them past a window at the right rate, we can create a flattened version of a zoetrope, and the lids appear to be blinking. So replacement shapes are an option for the lids, but for this character, I'll rig a single pair of lids so I can shape them more readily. I was all right with using a flattened sphere for the white of the eye, but I don't really want to use the same shape for the eyelids because of the way the edges are laid out, and I don't want to have triangles where I need to shape the lids. So I'll start with a plane to create the lids, and then round it to make a circular shape. To round this, we could use a tool that Lucas Santos suggested in the comments of an earlier video. Under the Edit Mesh menu, there's a tool called Circularize, which quickly rounds this into a circle. So thanks again for that tip, Lucas. And now I'll delete the construction history on this, and I'm a little concerned that these polygons at the corners may fold in and create a render artifact. So I'll merge these vertices to create three-sided polygons and reshape it a bit. Then duplicate it and cut it in half to create the upper and the lower lids. I'll rig the top lid first, and start by duplicating the joints that we used for the eye. I'll unparent them, and then move them forward to line up with the lid geometry. And I'll add three additional joints for the inner edge of the lid. And now I'll create the animation controls. Having a number of animation controls can get confusing, so I try to position them and shape them so that they're easy to identify and select when animating. I want these outer controls to follow the eye shape controls, so I'll make these a child of those controls. In fact, I don't expect to use the outer lid controls that much, but I want them for the difficult poses and for cleanup. Again, to help manage all these controls, I'll make additional attributes so we can turn on and off their visibility. And I'll make an animatable attribute so I can animate the visibility of the lid. This top lid is now rigged, so I'll repeat the process to rig the bottom lid. Lastly, I can make a highlight, which is just a simple polygon, and I'll make it a child of the pupil so it follows it. And I'll add another attribute to the main eye control so I can animate its visibility. And now the eye rig is complete. If I turn on all the controls, there are a lot of controls to look at, but these additional attributes make them easy to manage. And here's an animation test to check that the rig is working and to see if I can get the expressions that I want from the character. I animated both the scale and the position of the eyes and brows to get these three-quarter poses and animated the visibility of the lids and that outer shape to get the tapered line around the white of the eye. So those are a few ideas that we could use to rig the eyes for these type of flat characters. And in the next video, I'll rig the mouth for this character.